Introduction As we have discussed earlier that there are about 1.2 million animal species with great diversity of life. These animals differ from one another in their habitat, level of organization, body plan, symmetry, body cavity, germ layer, mode of locomotion, respiration, excretion, reproduction, etc. Animals are eukaryotic, multicellular and heterotrophic organisms. Animal cells do not have cell walls. Most of the animals are mobile. Animals are aquatic, example fishes, or terrestrial, example reptiles, mammals, etc. or aerial, example birds, on the basis of their habitat. On the basis of level of organization, animals either have cellular organization, example sponges, or tissue organization, example sealant rates. According to symmetry, Animals are either radially symmetrical, example sponges, cylindrates and echinoderms, or bilaterally symmetrical, example nematodes, arthropods, annelids and vertebrates, and some are asymmetrical, example snails. On the basis of body cavity, the animals are either acylomates, example cylindrates and flatworms, or pseudocelomates, example nematodes. According to presence of number of germ layers, animals are either diploblastic, example sponges, cylindrates, or triploblastic, example flatworms to mammals. We will now discuss some important characters and examples of various phylum of kingdom animalia. Objectives. At the end of this lesson, you'll be able to understand the characters of kingdom animalia, find out the divisions of kingdom animalia, understand the characters of classes of kingdom animalia, understand nomenclature, phylum porifera. Do you know that word porifera is derived from Greek words porus, which is pores, plus ferre, to bear, which means Organisms which bear pores or holes in its body. Due to presence of holes all over the body, there is a canal system which helps in circulating water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen. The animals of phylum porifera are sessile, sedentary and marine except one group. They are commonly called as sponges. These are non-motile animals attached to some solid support. The body of porifera is covered with a hard outside layer of skeleton. Skeleton is made up of calcareous or siliceous spicules or spongin fiber or both. The body design has very minimal differentiation and division into tissues. They are multicellular diploblastic and radially or asymmetrical animals. Some common examples of porifera are Euplectella, Cycon, Spongila, Cleona, Oscarella and Euspongia, Phylum Coelantrata. Similarly, Coelantrata is derived from Greek words koilos, hollow, plus enteron, gut. The animals of phylum Coelantrata are aquatic and are mostly marine except hydra. They are also called nidarians. They are multicellular, diploblastic and radially symmetrical animals. Their central cavity is called coelantrons or gastrovascular cavity which helps in digestion and circulation. The body wall is made up of two layers, outer epidermis and inner gastrodermis. Most of the animals are colonial, while some have solitary lifespan, that is, hydra. Some common examples of coelentrata are hydra, abelia, aurelia, 
jellyfish, and metridium sea anemone. Phylum Platyhelminthus. Likewise, Platyhelminthus is derived from Greek words platis is flat plus helminths is worm. They have leaf like or ribbon like dorsal ventrally flat body, so they are also known as flat worms. The animals of phylum Platyhelminthus are bilaterally symmetrical, multicellular, triploblastic. They do not have true coelom or body cavity. They have digestive cavity with a single opening, the mouth. They are mostly parasitic and few are free living, example planaria. Some common examples of platyhelminthus are planaria, fasciola, liver fluke, schictosoma, and tenia, tapeworm. Phylum nematoda or nemanthelminthus. Similarly, nemanthelminthus or nematoda is derived from Greek words nema, which is thread, plus helmins, worm. The animals of phylum nemanthelminthus are bilaterally symmetrical, multicellular, and triploblastic. Their body is cylindrical, tapering to its ends. There are tissues. Real organs are absent, although pseudocelum is present. They are mostly parasitic disease-causing, example, ascaris-causing ascariasis, vucheraria-causing elephantiasis, and entriobius-causing entrobiasis. Some common examples of nemanthelminthus are ascaris, which raria, entrobius, and encyclostoma, hookworm, phylum annelida. Do you know that word annelida is derived from Greek words, annelis, a ring which means body is, segment, is segmented. The animals of phylum annelida are bilaterally symmetrical, multicellular, and triploblastic. They have true body cavity, or they are coelomates. There are organs present and distributed in metamerically segmented body. They are found in various habitats like freshwater, marine water and land. Some common examples of annelida are Feritima, earthworm, Herodinaria, leech, Neris, Phylum arthropoda. Similarly, Arthropoda is derived from Greek words arthros, which is jointed, plus podos, which is foot, which means jointed legged animals. The animals of phylum Arthropoda are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, and metamerically segmented. They have false body cavity, or hemocylomates, that is, false body cavities filled with blood. They have Phylum mollusca. Likewise, the word mollusca is derived from Greek words molluscus, soft. Body is soft. The animals of phylum mollusca are bilaterally symmetrical with little segmentation and without appendages. The size of body ranges from microscopic to a giant, that is, octopus. They have reduced body cavity or hemocele. They have an open circulatory system and kidney-like excretory organs. Their body is divided into an anterior head, a vascular muscular foot and a hard dorsal visceral mass. Foot is used for movement. The entire body of mollusca is covered by a fold of thin skin called mantle. This mantle secre secretes a hard calcareous shell of one or more pieces. Some common examples of mollusca are Chiton, Octopus, Pilla, Unio, and Sapia, Cuttlefish, Phylum Echinodermata. Similarly, Echinodermata is derived from Greek words Echinos, which is spiny or hedgehog, plus derma, which is skin. Thus, these are spiny-skinned organisms.
They are exclusively free-living marine animals. The animals of phylum Echinodermata have radially, bilaterally, or pentamerous symmetry. They are triploblastic. They have true body cavity or coelom, which is modified into water vascular system, which is used for locomotion. Their body has oral and aboral surfaces. Oral surface has five radial areas called ambulacra. The entire body is covered by hard calcium carbonate structures that they use as skeleton. Some common examples of echinodermata are Asterius, starfish, Echinus, sea urchin, Antidon, sea lily, Ophiotrix, brittle star, Phylum protocordata. Do you know that word protocordata is derived from Greek words proto is primitive plus corda is string. The animals are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic and have coelom. They have notochord, which is long rod-like support structure that runs along the back of the animals separating the nervous tissue from the gut. This notochord is not present at all stages of life. Notochord provides a place for muscles to attach for ease of movement. They are exclusively marine animals. Some common examples of protocordata are Balanoglossus, Phylum vertebrata. Similarly, word chordata is derived from Greek words corda, which is string. The animals are bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic, silomic, and segmented with complex differentiation of body tissues and organs. They have notochord, class Pisces. The word Pisces comes from the Indo-European root pesk. It means fish. They are exclusively aquatic animals. They obtain oxygen dissolved in water by using gills. The animals of Pisces have streamlined body and have fins and a muscular tail which is used for movement. They have a cartilaginous or bony skeleton. The skin is covered with scales or plates. They are cold-blooded animals, that is, their body temperature changes with change in atmospheric temperature. Their heart is two-chambered. Their eyes are without eyelids. They have nostrils. They lay eggs. Some common examples of Pisces are Scoliodon, dogfish, Cinchiropus, mandarinfish, Pteroeus, lionfish, electric ray, stingray, etc. Class Amphibia Do you know that word amphibia is derived from Greek words amphi, which is double, plus bios, which is life, which means organisms which can live in water as well as on land. They are evolved from fish, but they have muscle glands in the skin in places of scales. Their skin is smooth, slippery, rich in mucus. Their heart is three-chambered. The respiration takes place either through gills or lungs. They have two pairs of limbs and their digits do not have claws. They lay eggs. Some common examples of amphibia are salamander, bufo, toad, rana, common frog, hyla, tree frog, etc. Class reptilia. Similarly, reptilia is derived from Latin words repri, it means to crawl. It means the creeping animals. They are mainly found on land. They also live in water. The skin is covered with epidermal scales. Their skin is waterproof and is protected with horny scales. They are cold-blooded animals. Their heart is three-chambered. Only crocodile has four-chambered heart. The respiration takes place through lungs. 
Their body has head, neck, trunk and a tail. They have two pairs of tetrapodes, pentadactyl limbs and claw digits. They lay eggs with tough covering so they do not need to lay eggs in water. Some common examples of reptilia are turtle, chameleon, naja, king cobra, draco, flying lizard, hemidactylus, house lizard, etc. Class Aves Do you know that word Aves is derived from Latin word Avis, which is bird? Their body is spindle or boat-shaped, which is divisible into head, neck, trunk, and tail. The body is covered with feathers. They are warm-blooded animals. Their heart is four-chambered. They breathe through lungs. Class Mammalia Similarly, Mammalia is derived from Latin word mammae, which means breasts or nipples. They have mammary glands for the production of milk to nourish their young ones. Their skin has hairs and sweat and oil glands. They are warm-blooded animals. Their heart is four-chambered. Their body is divisible into head, neck, trunk and tail. External ear pinna are present. They have four limbs. Diaphragm divides body into two cavities internally. They breathe through lungs. Mammals give birth to young ones except two mammals, Echidna and Platypus, which lay eggs. Some common examples of mammalia are cat, rat, bat, monkey, chimpanzee, gorilla and man. Nomenclature Nomenclature is the system of naming living organisms, that is, plants and animals. Do you know why there is need of nomenclature? I will tell you. Because common names cover only localized organisms and do not cover plants and animals of entire earth. Second problem was that one organism has many names as different people in different areas have different languages, so they name organisms accordingly. Third problem was that some names were misleading like starfish, cuttlefish, jellyfish are actually not fishes. Most important drawback is that there is no scientific basis in selecting a common name. In 18th century, Carolus Linnaeus introduced scientific system of binomial nomenclature for naming the organisms in his book Species Plantarum. According to binomial nomenclature, every scientific name is formed of two words, genus and species. There are some rules which should be followed during writing the scientific names in binomial nomenclature. Each scientific name must have two words, generic and specific name. Generic name must start with capital letter. Specific name must start with small letter. Scientific names are generally derived from Greek or Latin word. When printed, they should be in italics. When handwritten or typed, they should be underlined. Scientific names are significant because they are same all over the world. They indicate evolutionary relationship. They solve the problem of multiple naming of one organism. Did you know? Animal kingdom is broadly classified into two groups. Non-chordates and chordates. Non-chordates include eight phylum, Porifera, Cilentrata, Platyhelminthus, Nematoda, Annelida, Anthropoda, Mollusca, and Echinodermata. While chordates are again classified into two subgroups, Protochordata and Vertebrata. Vertebrata is again divided into five classes, Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves, and Mammalia.
Summary Let us summarize what we have learned. Vertebrates are further divided into five classes. Pisces, Amphibia, Reptilia, Aves and Mammalia. The binomial nomenclature makes for a uniform way of identification of the vast diversity of life around us. The binomial nomenclature is made up of two words, a generic and a specific name. 